Happy 10 years of FIFA Ultimate Team, guys, where in 2009, an innovative idea gave FIFA one of the most successful game modes a sports video game has ever seen. A way for football fans to, and I quote, earn coins, trade with friends, and have fun. Over the course of the first 10 years of Ultimate Team, the community only grew and grew and grew. And before long, as a business should, EA found ways to monetize this. And it didn't take long for EA to add microtransactions, gambling, packs. Before the community even had a chance to speak their voice, the very things FIFA Ultimate Team was created upon were being destroyed by the greed of those who had the potential to create the very greatest game mode in the history of video games. The concept of earning coins began to be undermined by those who could use real life money to buy their way to success. Next, trading online with thousands of other gamers. The very essence of card trading was removed to encourage more microtransaction sales. And in recent years, even the fun was extracted to force yearly unfinished video games into the realm of competitive esports. There's no denying that we've come a long way, but are we even going the right way anymore? But I don't want to make this whole video on how FIFA has gone downhill in many different aspects of the game in the last couple of years. I also want to look back on what has been great about FIFA Ultimate Team. The whole community really has been looking back with some nostalgia in the last couple of years. So I put together this survey, which kind of went a little bit viral over on Twitter. The whole community has started to do it. Even uh, people like uh, KSI has done his own version. Cal Freezy has done his own version. And a lot of other uh, big names as well have just been talking about what their favorite cards are and stuff like that. So I said, let's do a foot survey. I said, what is your first FIFA? And I want you guys in the comments of this YouTube video to go ahead and do the survey as well. Uh, you can leave out some that, you know, don't apply to you or you don't want to do. Um, but make sure to number it one through nine just to make it so that everybody can understand it. My first FIFA was FIFA 11. And I didn't play it all too much, but that was my first FIFA. And I didn't play Ultimate Team. I just played it with friends. This was uh, really back before uh, FIFA Ultimate Team really started to grow. Um, before I started playing Ultimate Team very, very religiously, that wasn't until FIFA 14, which is also, in my opinion, the best FIFA there is. Now, I didn't play much of FIFA 12 or FIFA 13 either, and those video games I've heard were absolutely amazing. FIFA 12, FIFA 13, FIFA 14, that was like the golden era of FIFA. I don't think that it's really going to be able to be topped uh, in terms of FIFA. That Those three years were just consistently amazing. Um, what was my favorite card of all time? My favorite card had to be the FIFA 14 team in the season, Marco Royce. That card was so good. If you guys remember the finesse shots from outside the box in FIFA 14, if you thought the FIFA 19 pre-patch finesse shots were good, you should have played FIFA 14. Those finesse shots, if you had a good shooter like Marco Royce, uh, Mario Goetze, uh, anybody just with over 85, 90 shooting, they would just nail the top corner on the far post every single time and that card was so good for me. I also really, really liked uh, Team of the Season Usman Dembele in FIFA 17. I really liked Mandzukic Team of the Season in FIFA 14. I really liked the Closa Record Breaker card in FIFA 14. Um, FIFA 17, I also liked Insigne, just like the regular Insigne card. But what was the most OP card of all time? Now, when you think about Team of the Seasons, I guess they're supposed to be OP. Uh, but I'd put that Usman Dembele FIFA 17 card first. But since they're already supposed to be overpowered, I gotta say 
FIFA 14 Victor Ibarbo. If you guys remember this card from FIFA 14, it was better than most of like Ronaldo's cards. It was ridiculous. You could get him for 2,000 coins and he would play like a 95 rated Ronaldo. It was a, it's not an exaggeration. He was so good. So that's probably the most OP card of all time. But you also got to consider cards like Chris Smalling in FIFA 17, Eric Bailly last year, um, Bakayoko. Um, I think that was in FIFA 17. Um, and then you also have FIFA 15's Gervinho and Dumbia. Those cards were overpowered. Uh, you also have the FIFA 17 Butland and Begovic. Those cards were super overpowered. But what was the worst FIFA? And honestly, it, it should be unanimous. FIFA 16 was the worst FIFA. And I, I honestly would go to the length that it was the worst video game of all time. It was just absolutely terrible. Now, the one thing that FIFA 16 did have is in comparison to like FIFA 19's gameplay and FIFA 18's gameplay, FIFA 16 gameplay wasn't all too terrible, like in comparison to the recent FIFAs, but it still wasn't good. It wasn't good. And that's the worst part is that was pretty much the best part of the game was gameplay. And it was not good. Then when you consider the content, it was the worst FIFA in terms of content. Nothing happened all year in that game. Nothing happened. And FIFA, EA were still figuring out how price ranges were going to work still. Like, obviously, price ranges screwed up FIFA 15 post-March, but FIFA 15 was great until March. FIFA 16 was just terrible throughout the year. Um, and honestly, after foot draft got boring after two weeks and people started to do 192 foot draft challenges, 193 foot draft challenges... That game was dead after a couple of weeks. It was it was the worst FIFA. And honestly, I think that's going to be the most common worst FIFA out of the comments below. But I'm interested to see if you guys actually enjoyed FIFA 16 at all. I think it was absolutely terrible, though. What was the best promotion? I think the best promotion of all time. It's either like a team of the year in like FIFA 15. Team of the year FIFA 15 was great. But that was like before squad building challenges were a thing. And now that squad building challenges were a thing, promos are like even better because there's another aspect to the promotion. I think FIFA 17's footness was just great. Every single day I wanted to log on and I wanted to play and I wanted to do SBCs and I wanted to make videos. FIFA 17's footness was great. But footness in FIFA 18 was terrible because of all the leaks and the cards weren't very good. So uh, I think the best promo was FIFA 17's footness. Um, the worst promotion of all time, it had to be St. Patrick's Day, FIFA 15. This was like right after price ranges were introduced. So already the game was just in shambles. Like EA, that, that was like one of the worst decisions they could have ever made by putting in price ranges mid-game that year. After, honestly, it was a very, very fun video game until then. And it was still pretty good after price ranges. It just destroyed the market. And that was like a lot of what I did, obviously. I like to trade. I like to use the market. Um, and price ranges, like they didn't even do it right. Like they wouldn't update the price ranges. Everything was either extinct or not selling. And so the market was just unusable, but it was still fun to like collect extinct cards. It was like a new, uh, you know, uh, collection FIFA ultimate team idea. And the thing is it didn't even do what it was supposed to do, which was stop coin selling. That didn't, that didn't happen until a couple years later when they started banning people for uh, selling and buying coins, which was good. Definitely a good thing that EA did that price ranges on the other hand, weren't the greatest idea. Um, but that was the worst promo was St. Patrick's day and FIFA 15 because St. Patrick's day was right after price ranges. And then what they did was all they did was release green cards for Irish players. But not only did they just release green cards, they didn't give them an upgrade. So, you know, Shane Long, who was like a 79 rated card, got, he got a green card, but it was still 79 rated with the same stats. So it was just, it was pointless. It was worse, worse than Movember, worse than Movember, worse than Scream, um, which are bad. Like, honestly, Movember and Scream cards, though, those have been pretty terrible promos, but the worst promo was FIFA 15 St. Patrick's Day. It was just absolutely atrocious. First FIFA YouTuber watch was actually Matt HD Gamer. I watched him when he pink slipped KSI. And um, that like, so basically Matt HD Gamer and KSI, like at the same time, I started watching them both. It was back in like FIFA 13, FIFA 14 era. 
Um, and it was before I started making content myself. The first FIFA streamer I watched was Nick28T, and I also watched a guy called Resolution Now. He's the guy who inst inspired me to start streaming, which ultimately led to YouTube, um, and he doesn't stream anymore. He hasn't streamed for a few years, but um, he's the guy who inspired me to start streaming, and I also started obviously watching Castro pretty soon after that as well, uh, given the fact that he's the biggest FIFA streamer he was back then, and he still is right now. Um, so the first FIFA streamer I watched was Nick28T, then Resolution Now, and Castro. Um, there were also other streamers that I watched early. Aman Siddiqui, he doesn't stream anymore, but I watched him back in the day. Miran, um, he streamed, he doesn't stream anymore. Um, there was another Invader97. Uh, he only streamed for a few months, but uh, he was uh, one of the guys who helped me get partnered over on Twitch. But it's been a hell of a ride, and uh, it really has been. Um, it really has been a lot of fun. Uh, to play FIFA Ultimate Team. And I want to applaud EA for what they've done with this game mode and how they've kept it alive throughout the course of 10 years. Now, I don't agree with every decision they make. And honestly, I think that Ultimate Team had a lot more potential um, to grow, and it still does. And EA continue to let their greed um, over uh, overlook that and, and you know kill the potential of this game because some of these promotions are, are money grabs, strictly money grabs, and I think that they should stray away from that. I think that they should try to return to their roots a little bit more. That's what the whole beginning of this video was about. Return to your roots a little bit more, you know. Go back to earning coins a little bit more. Like, right now, it's like the people with the best teams in the game are honestly the people who buy the most FIFA points or just very talented traders, but... Honestly, a casual player who's just grinding and grinding ultimate team isn't going to be able to ever afford a prime moments Pele. It's just not going to happen. You have to buy your way to him um, or, or really, really trade your way. And when it comes to trading, that's taken on a new um, name Tr or trading has taken on a new connotation, definition. Trading back in the day was you would trade cards. You would trade your, you would trade your Petter check for a Ronaldinho with your friend who also plays ultimate team. Now, trading is buying a card and selling it for for profit. It's a completely different thing now in FIFA Ultimate Team. And then having fun. That third aspect. I mean, you guys can you guys can determine that for yourself. But I think after the forced esports in terms of FIFA Ultimate Team has not been a smart idea. I think that if they're going to continue esports in FIFA, I think it should be, um, I think it should be played more so in head-to-head, -head, and there should be another game mode uh, to qualify for esports, not an ultimate team. I think ultimate team should be more down the fun route of a game mode rather than an esport competitive game mode. But that's just my opinion. Let me know down below what you guys think as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I had to take a break from mental health issues, but I'm back now. And hopefully I can stay consistent on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.